I'll start by introducing myself. I'm David Feinberg. I'm a child psychiatrist and uh, head Google Health. My friend, Karen. Hi, I'm Karen DeSalvo. I'm a primary care physician and I'm the chief health officer in David's group at Google Health. I thought it'd be good for us to kind of talk about our old life and uh, working as physicians. And uh, both of us have spouses that are physicians. And we obviously have amazing colleagues that we've known over the years. And kind of what do you think they're going through and how hard it is for them and how can we help them? Yeah, you know, Karen, I keep thinking about two things and one you just brought up. One of them is um, I can't remember ever in my career where mm -hmm. I was worried that I would bring something home. Mm -hmm. and so like that's a new one. And then I don't ever remember in my career or in those that I know other than in the military docs had to make and nurses had to make decisions about who would actually get the care kind of these rationing decisions um i just think that's got a way on them have have you heard from anyone who's had to in essence say you're going to get the ventilator and you're not uh to me it's just like we were we in this country and in the developing world we've been so blessed that we never have that question and i think we have a lot of folks that are now having to answer that. And I don't think we were prepared. Yeah, I'm reflecting what you're saying all that about Jay. And um, he's very meticulous when he comes home from work about shedding all of his clothes because he does think a lot about bringing home um, um, drug resistant bacteria and other organisms uh, because he's living in that every day. So it's a part of his way of thinking, I think from an inf infection control standpoint. But for us in, in Louisiana, I mean, David, the um, the Katrina experience is really raw for us still. I mean, it's only been 15 years and um, a lot of, uh, of our physician colleagues had to make choices um, about who was gonna get intubated and who was not. And um, there were a lot of choices that we continued to have to make in the months, literally after Katrina, where we were working on the streets without electricity or potable water, no access to laboratory or radiology services. And it wasn't nearly as dramatic as the early days of the hospital, but it was um, a time of uh, rationing and resource allocation because we were we didn't have any open facilities. So I think it's interesting um, for us to have had that prolonged experience in Louisiana, and and maybe that's part of the reason why Jay and some other folks that are working down there uh, feel like they're a little more equipped. Um, new the folks in New York, interestingly, some of my colleagues there are reflecting on some of the experiences that they had in Sandy. And so there it's, are, yeah. I think there's some some training that people have had in some pockets, but there's this, you know, 15 or 10 years of new uh, physicians who it's, who it's a new experience for. And it's absolutely stressful. I mean, that's not the way, you know, we're so used to having resources in this context. It's a different way to have to practice medicine. You're exactly right. In some ways, gives us ability to help other parts of the world practice medicine all the time. We've heard about, you know, countries with mm -hmm. I don't know four million people that have four ventilators to start with. So, in some ways, it's pretty humbling, and and I think uh, uh, hopefully we come out of this with a better sense of equity, kind of worldwide. I hope so. I, you know, I think the the fact that people are paying attention to the equity issues, and you know, it start it starts always a very similar way. People look at, at differences in mortality or death rates uh, based on the color of someone's skin or their zip code, you start to back that up and you realize it's differential for care. And then, you know, I think even now we're, we're getting clarity on the data that it's different. If you have access to a test, you know, there are, are disparities and, and equity issues there. In Louisiana, like, um, we were one of the first places to, to recognize that you couldn't just have drive up testing sites because people that were low income didn't have cars or other people don't have cars. So trying to build not only care models in general, but remembering you got to even do it in COVID um, to meet people uh, where they are. So I'm, you know, you know how much I believe in things like equity and, and eliminating disparities. I know you do too. It's, 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 it's not good that it's happened in COVID, but it's, you know, on the front page and causing us to think about all the structural ways that we drive inequity. So maybe there'll be some good that comes out of out of it. Yeah, I, I keep thinking if we come out of this and telemedicine is working, that's great. If people mm -hmm. understand mental health, that would be great. If people understand the public health, that would be great. And the disparities, like, I mean, these could be the silver linings that we say, okay, now the world, hey, the world knows about curves and epidemiology. Yeah. Wouldn't it be great if we had this now part of our discussion 
part of our kind of political will. You know, we have um, doctors and other clinicians on our team at Google Health mm -hmm. that have uh, gone back to work as frontline folks. Um, Tell me about that. It's it's it's. I signed up to volunteer in California. They didn't call me, um, uh, but felt this kind of calling that if um, called, I I wanted to answer the call. And mm -hmm. some of our folks um, have. And I'm just wondering, kind of, what you think about that kind of sacrifice and and how it helps us. Yeah, I was really um, so proud of you for volunteering. And, and I know you and I have had discussions about what it feels like to be a physician and not be, in, I'm an internist, so I was slinging a stethoscope, you know, like sort of in the middle of it. And um, I, watching our colleagues who um, were in a position for one reason or another to go back on the front lines has been really heartening. We had a, a lot of our folks in the UK who actually got called up, um, as you well know. And so it was, there, were, there was volunteering, which a, a lot of uh, the team did in the U.S. context, but in the U.K., they were so shorthanded that people um, had to work in, in field hospitals and other places. Um, and though they're you know, typically clinically active anyway, it was just sort of this added um, um, type of work in a different, I would say, more military environment because it was these field hospitals. To a person, um, they were all proud to be able to do it, I think, um, felt like it was meaningful and um, appropriately concerned. But at the same time, I think very similar to my husband's experience, like we have the skills and, and we want to apply them. Now, you know, I, I think what's been really a struggle is people who are not, um, who, have, who have specialties like derm or psych or pathology or radiology, you know, we have folks like that on our team and they were a little worried they were going to get called up to intubate somebody. But uh, even in New York, that was happening to a lot of our colleagues that it was pretty out of specialty. They were being asked to triage in the ER. So I think the physician community, I'll just say it really stepped up. I'm super proud, not only of our people, but everybody. Yeah. The other thing that I think is always more moving than even the docs or the nurses. I mean, to me, nurses are the heroes of healthcare every day. And you've seen them step up in ways that just, well, they bring tears to my eyes all the time. So I'm, okay. I'm yeah. I think it's Nurses Week now or Nurses Month or whatever. It should be Nurses Year because they're they're so key to care and uh, um, proud that we got nurses on our team and proud to have really close friends that are in nursing. That, have, that I was, that I was trained by a lot of really great nurses at Charity yeah. Hospital yeah. Yeah. <laughs> who yeah. told no me question. what to do. No and I, I'm 100 percent with you. And, and I know, you know, I think also the whole uh, the whole suite of workers and um, we, you know, I think we all have to remember that there are people working front desk, back desk, yeah. cleaning the rooms, turning over the rooms. All those folks have been putting their lives on the line. So it's pretty, it's remarkable to, to yeah. watch and be a part of. Certainly a team sport. I, I used to always say that we could learn so much from nursing from a mental health standpoint. When, mm -hmm. when a nurse has a patient that dies, that he or she has been caring for, the other nurses on the unit come over, hug that person, say, hey, why don't you go take a break and I'll cover your other patient or patients. You were, you were starting to talk about this a little earlier and, and maybe we can get back to it a little bit, which is you have such, I, I love your frame always of whole person and um, physical, mental and emotional health and the nursing profession, I'll just call them out, are so much better at thinking holistically about, about a person as having all of those needs and um, care plans and then and they reflect that in the way they take care of each other. I think that comes to be a big part of it. Our training in medicine is much more typically focused just on physical health needs. And how have you stayed strong? Because you're new to Google. Um, thankfully, we got you. you. I don't think we could have designed, you know, in a test tube, a better person um, for the role that we've thrown you into. Um, how have you handled and stayed strong during what has been this world pandemic? You're in a new company. We have this big platform. And we've really asked you to be front and center, not, not only for our own 100 plus thousand workforce, but for all of the kind of things that Google's doing around coronavirus. Well, um, I'll start by just saying 
what will sound cliche, but it's a great team. And the the company, the people in the company are really um, science based. They are about taking care of each other. So it's a really warm and welcoming place to work. It's been like that since Newler orientation, really since before. Um, so I'm thankful for that. Uh, I think uh, I'll be honest, I've had some rough days. It's been a long few weeks and uh, there are days when even, especially days, honestly, when I start digging deeply into the science and thinking about the trajectory of, de of developing good therapeutics or a vaccine and considering what's gonna happen not only clinically over the course of that time, but the social and emotional and financial impact on people in the world. Uh, it, it's, it's tough some days to think about that suffering, frankly, that's happening because of the pandemic. And I still sometimes can't really believe that I'm living through this. And I bet you're having similar experience, but most of the time, I feel really uh, grateful that I'm here now with you and others on the team get to do the work that we get to do. I, you know, as a public health person, you, know, you try to get out messaging through your platforms. And even when I was in the federal government, it's the reach is so small compared to what we do when we push out just some small information about washing your hands or taking care of yourself and literally billions of people get that information and in, in their language and in a way that they can ingest. It just, it feels great to be able to give back to the world. So I'm all things considered uh, good, um, but definitely like everybody struggling with the reality of this and, and how we're going to get through it. Yeah, I'm having those same feelings. There's definitely been bad days. I was having a very bad day yesterday. Mm -hmm. and now I realized what was driving it. I thought yesterday was Tuesday. <laughs> yesterday was actually Wednesday. <laughs> when I realized that this morning, like my mood completely changed. And, <laughs> and, um, and my wife and our older daughter, who's sheltering in place with us, was noticing that I was cranky and irritable yesterday. And I'm like, I'm much better shape because I realized what day it is. So it's just so disorienting. Yeah. You know, there's this, the, the world is sick and upside down. And yeah. we we all got a fever. We all have the same nightmare. It's, it's we're all, we all have these worries, some way, way worse than what I have. So I am beyond blessed, but it gets to you. And I think it's okay. And I think, you know, breathing and, and exercising and sleeping and a break from the news and reaching out for help when you need it are all good pieces of advice. That yeah. being said, it's hard. And um, anyways, my day is way better today because I'm not, <laughs> well, you know, part of your vital signs are, are you oriented time right. three? I'm disoriented. It just, I'm, I, I'm with better. you. It kind of starts running together. You know, I, I think some of this is about as physicians, we, well, we're, we want to fix things, right? That's our inclination. And this is something that we want to fix. We want to be able to say, there's a treatment, there's a vaccine, there's a prevention, whatever. This is the known science, but it's, well, um, one of our team members uh, says this, and so I'll use his quote, which is that uh, never really before has, has science been um, so rapidly evolving and so consequential at the same time. And so it's, it's a lot to keep up with. It's exciting to see, and it'll be great when, you know, it's a mix of public health and, and, med and medicine strategies, but yeah, it, it, it's like you, you, you feel like you're being helpful, but we don't have the tools that, that we sometimes are expect to have in medicine to make people well. Yeah. It, yeah. I was just, just going to add this thing about also the physician persona where, and you were talking about this after the code kind of situation. And we are taught at least in my generation of physicians to be more like independent, cowboyish, like you're on, you know, be strong, do your own thing. And I, I think it's increasingly, and I'm glad, okay, for people to say it's not a good day, or, you know, I need, uh, you know, I need someone to talk to because that's perfectly human and perfectly normal and exactly what what we should all be doing, even as caregivers. Yeah, I would just say, as kind of to wrap, as to our to our colleagues out there, those that we know and those that we uh, don't know, but we know how hard they're working that uh, we, we so have incredible gratitude. We hope we're building tools and information that's helping you and and uh, don't be afraid to ask for help. Um, yeah. uh, and hopefully we make that easy to find. So um, 
Hey, this is a pleasure, Karen, to talk with you at this level because usually we're firing away trying to get stuff done. So this is well, this is nice to have a boss with a psychiatrist. I'm super <laughs> I'm super lucky. <laughs> it's great. Thank, Thank you, David. Thanks. Have a great day. All right, you too.